Hello again and welcome to the Tripod NRL Betting Podcast and this week we will preview round 15 and talk a bit about Origin. Let go! Well, I've got a big show for you guys this week. Obviously, a um, nearly a full slate uh, on the cards for the NRL. Obviously, Origin up tomorrow. And we have the most special of guests, born and raised in Balmain, our Tigers resident expert, Peter Evans. Pete, how are you doing today? Very well. Thanks for having me on the, uh, the pod. What an honour. Yeah, absolute pleasure it's to have you It's an honour for us too, mate. Uh, you've been one of our most loyal fans, uh, you supported us when we were nothing. You listen every week. 100% uh, right. And I'll yeah. start, yep. start with the question straight away. Uh, Go for it. Why? <laughs> I've got a really dull life. <laughs> Clearly. Well, we all do, don't we? <laughs> we all do. Here, isn't it? I think Pete's the only guy that's actually listened to every single pod. And it's nice as well, you know, we're trying to spread ourselves on social media. Yep. And, um, you know, we get notifications when we got a comment or a like. And it's nice to see that we get a like, you know, on a few of our posts. And then I see who it was and usually it's Pete. Yep. You know, so I'm a big liker of your yeah. page on Facebook. Occasionally I share so all my five friends can see as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do appreciate that. And, uh, I was, I was going to ask Pete, do you think you've started betting a little bit more since you've been listening to the pod? It's a serious problem. <laughs> luckily, I'm making money. You guys are heroes. I mean, I'm this close to quitting work. <laughs> My early retirement plan was going to be shares, property, but now it's just whatever you tell me. Yeah. I put my money where you tip. <laughs> <laughs> that warms yes. my heart to say that. We should probably say that unlike both, that Pete's actually a really successful real estate agent. Uh, so True. it's awesome to have him on the pod. I think that's a bit unfair. I've been dragged right down Alex's level sitting next to him for the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, we were saying actually you've had a bad quarter probably ever since you started listening to the pod. So Well, I haven't had to work. That's, I guess, the problem, but also yeah. a, a great thing for my bank account. Yeah. That's very awesome. True, and of true. course, you're a diehard Tigers fan. So I'm a long-suffering giving... Tigers fan. <laughs> it's been a tough, what, seven, probably eight, nine ten years. years? Ten years now. Ten years yeah. this year. I try Just to forget. Brutal. Yeah, but uh, a bit of light last week, which was nice. Yeah, yeah, talk a bit about last week. Obviously, a massive win over the Rabbits last week. Well, I was nervous because obviously we've had a, a big long losing streak, and after Taylor came out in the press and said we don't worry about scoring any points, we're just going to defend. I thought maybe expectations were a bit low on the Tigers, and I thought maybe that the young Tigers, who were starting to grow up and really should be putting some wins together now, were um, I guess feeling they didn't have. It. Well, they had an excuse not to perform. It was just a case of let's dig in and defend and it doesn't matter if we win or lose games. But then a few things started coming out the week before that game. A lot of the Twitter accounts of the Tiger players saying that they were really up for this game, saying they'd drawn a line in the sand, they were ready for this game and this was the turnaround point of their season. Because I think it was about round, round eight, our last win. Yeah, it had been, yeah, it was a long time. Oh, it's been a long oh, it was time. A long time, man. <laughs> um, I think you make a really good point there because... You know, we can't look on it at the basic level of handicapping and that is that just wins and losses and obviously the odds are kind of already based on where a team is on the ladder and how they're going with wins and losses. But what we really try and do in this pod is look a little deeper and look a few layers, you know, a few dreams into the inception and, and I completely agree with you. I thought one of the reasons I loved the Tigers last week was just because they were abysmal in the previous couple games, oh, to yeah. not the score against the Cowboys, games. a Cowboys second string side, just about. That was a disgrace. You know, yeah, and, yeah, and people. They popped a lot of flags. That's going to take oh, people. Alex knows, I've been complaining about it for the last <laughs> yes, true. five or six weeks non stop. Very, very true. <laughs> and see, the yeah. thing is, when people see a game like that, that's going to just make their minds up about a team and they're going to say, I'm never going to play that team again. And actually, that's where you get built in you value in future value. weeks. And they can't be any worse than what they were in those future weeks. And you said it yourself, the guys were coming out and saying oh, that... Oh, didn't they turn know, up? Yeah, they, they had did. no excuse. They had to had to put in a performance. And, man, there's some talent on that team. Yeah, um, a lot of talent. In the back line and, you know, Marty Tapau. We were talking about oh. Tapau today, actually, at work. And he's just an absolute monster. Doesn't he excite you? He's brilliant. 
Yeah, he I is. just hope we can tie him down to a, a, a contract. I don't think anyone can tie that guy down. <laughs> but uh, there was a moment in that game where you guys were up 12 with about 15 to go and you got a penalty. You know, pretty much in front. Richards is a pretty dead-eye kicker. And I was screaming to take the two because I had money. We had Tigers uh, plus eight and a half, but I also had money on them just to win. Mm. And the, you take the two, you know, 99 times out of 100 there, but they just said, oh, we'll take the four and just tapped it, passed it to tap out. And it was, it was game over. And yeah. I think he won that game by... Something more like 28 yeah, in the yeah, end. We really ran away with the second them. half. And first half, it was probably should have been ahead a lot more points. And previous rounds, I mean, against Canberra, we were up by a lot of points and we threw it away. We didn't close the game off. And I think that's where the, the young boys will learn how to close those games off later in the season and hopefully through to the next few seasons as well. And uh, this game, they did their follow through and, and cleaned up. Yeah, because yeah. they've been saying that for a few seasons now. And I know we sort of talk about it every now and then, but they're always saying, look... Tigers are a really good young team, you know, they, they're going to put it together at some point, and next they just year, never have, year. you know, it's always <laughs> next year, so, um, I don't know, I know it's sort of, they've fallen, fallen a bit behind, but is it still possible you see them making the eight, mate, this year? I want to say yes, if we, if we turn up like last week, we won't lose too many games, Yeah, I, yeah. I think we were fantastic, but... I still think that maybe there's a few too many excuses out there for the boys, and mm-hmm. I'm concerned that they're going to perhaps lean on that and their expectations this year from most of the pundits and media is that they're probably not going to make the eight. They're still a couple of years away from their best and I think they've taken that on board and thought that it doesn't matter if we don't make the eight. No one's in trouble here. We're not going to be you know, thrown out of our jobs if we, if we don't put the wins together. So I think, um, yeah, I think they're probably going to maybe be just around the, the cusp of the eight. They probably let themselves down in a couple of games they should have won and yeah. you know, they can't yeah. really afford to do that. But I actually think they are Smokies, although maybe you're right, maybe they're just going to throw caution to the wind and they're almost a side that's really good to play as a giant killer and maybe they're the sort of side that can beat a top four team but will actually uh, not lift and not have their best game against the, the bottom four sides, which yeah, are the teams yeah. they should beat. Um, so obviously Pete's a massive Tigers fan, we can't wait to preview uh, Manly Tigers, which is on Friday night, but we've yep. also got, of course, Origin. Yep. If you're listening to this tonight or whether you're listening to this on a Wednesday morning, Origin... Uh, game big. two is here down in Melbourne. You know, obviously Maroon snuck home. You know, uh, closed the game out well in game one for a one nil lead. Mm-hmm. So, how do you boys see this one, Pete? Well, oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll start it off. I guess obviously Queensland favoured in this one. I think the line. Let me just see if I can pull it up. See here. the line. I was actually going to say there's a little bit as much as I hate. I hate to say it. There was line value with New South Wales at plus four. I felt just yep. because of the nature of the game you know it's going to be low scoring you know it's going to be be tight and you know they're going to be desperate but it's pretty much a three and a half across the yeah, board it's, now it's almost so three it and a half across, down. across the board um obviously we've been talking a little bit a little bit um and you you probably know pete talking about the money back specials and i think you've been playing them as well on on you know all three different sites that you can get um so you know obviously the value there you know you're going to play the straight up um but I mean, yeah, the, the lines come down a little bit, and obviously it makes it a little bit tricky. Um, the value's still probably probably with New South Wales slightly, um, Cooper Cronk being out and and that kind of stuff. But I mean, yeah, it's tough. As you said, it's tough to bet against your team and then be sort of half rooting for New South Wales and half rooting for Queensland. It's guff time. You have yeah. a terrible time. I uh, won't be rooting for anybody. What about you, Pete? Oh, I'm pretty Take wide-eyed when it comes to State of Origin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't touch it with the bets. If I do, it's the money-back specials, and it's all my money I can on Queensland. Yep. Nice. So to reiterate those money-back specials, uh, if your team leads at any point in the game, you will be guaranteed mo- at least money back if you don't win, which is pretty yep. good in any close game. And that did happen in Game 1. New South Wales that, did lead I think before we came back. So that's on bet, Sporting Bet and Tom. So both the William Hill sites. Um, and money back if you're within eight points and you're losing. Yep. That's on that's sports, on sports bet. bet. They're both really good bets because we do expect it to be close, low scoring, and potentially with lead. And as you, as you saw in game one, if you had money on whichever side, you at least got your money back because um, obviously you know New South Wales came within eight, and then also there was a, a couple of lead changes in there. So yeah, everyone walked away a winner. Yeah, um, so we do uh, recommend that that's worth playing against. So when we say straight up, we mean Head-to-head, just betting for the win. You can bet the line if you want, but you're not getting that extra money-back yeah. value. So, And that uh, is positive EV, and that's what we try and do on this show. Yeah. Um, but what about Paul Gallen coming out? Grub! 
He's calling us grubs. Who does he think he is? Alright. Grub. Alright. He's the biggest grub of them all. Actually, it was pretty funny. I was like, you've probably heard it as well on the way back, Pete, but um, Gordon Tallis just saying how Queenslanders aren't grubs, blah, 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 and you said, well, it's the biggest grubs ever. And then there was just a Twitter outpour just ripping crap out of Gordy. He's like, I don't care. He Once loves that, though, Yeah, he, he loves, loves it. <laughs> and New South Wales hates Gordy. Yeah. Yeah. But to be honest, the last game, what did they have? They had Bird out, they had Gallon out, and they had Reynolds out. That's their three biggest grubs. Yeah, So yeah. maybe True. they had a point. Maybe they weren't the grubbiest team for once. <laughs> <laughs> for once. But Gallon's back now, yeah, so he's yeah, back yeah, in their favour. Yeah. So yeah. they'll yeah. outgrub us this time. And I've got to admit, just on that point, that they probably are slightly improved, bringing Gallon back into the team. I think he could be past his best, but I still think he you will lift. You can't go past his effort. Dude. Yeah, he's and, and experience. As much as I hate him, he makes so many tackles. Yeah, and, and yep. he just, he and just doesn't, get, he doesn't yep. get forced back in the tackle. He always you know, is moving forward. And obviously, bring Morris in as well. And on the Queensland side, we've lost Kronk. You can't deny that that's a loss. Um, well, Cherry's a good player in his own right. But, hopefully yeah. there's a couple of players out of form there, you know, players that haven't played a lot, players that, you know, maybe should have been dropped for their club a few weeks ago and weren't. Yeah, and true. And are now playing in the halves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we look forward to that as well. Um, so get now, on the money back specials. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, look, what else? We've got, um, obviously, round 15 to preview. Had yep. a good win, as we said. Uh, not only did we have the Tigers, we had the Eels on Monday night. So it was an awesome round. We said we were going to get back in the winner's circle, and we certainly we did. did. Uh, four. But do we want to talk a little bit about the weekend, mate? It was an absolute... It was a, a win. In, I don't want to the, talk about it I want to hear about the weekend. <laughs> it was a win at the betting window, but it was an absolute debacle from a personal standpoint. Listen. I don't know if you remember it. I um, don't. I don't. I don't <laughs> remember a thing. Went out on Saturday night to the regatta for... Remember Holly Spencer? Holly Spencer's birthday, so a dear I friend do. of the pod. Uh, I know yep. she's listening, so shout out to Holly. Uh, obviously, she's engaged. I think lovely. she's up there at about 90%. She she hits a lot of the episodes. I've, I've yeah. Seen oh yeah, second oh, yeah. only to Pete. Yeah, yeah, she's no, she's a big competition. Yeah, yeah she's a rival. <laughs> and um, no, that was actually all right. Like um, catching up with a few friends, caught up with the newlyweds Joe and Jesse, and I know that they were. I remember that part. Yeah. <laughs> um. Then then probably the night it's took a, a, a downturn that. to that. We went to Sway Bar. So shout out to the good people at Sway Bar. Uh, Matt McDonald took us there. Was kind enough to get us a hundred dollar bar tab. That was, was cool. Yeah, I think we got. One drink out of that. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> All right. Thanks for that, Matt. Didn't see Shivy Rose there. That, that was that, that was unfortunate. Every night out in the valley without shit, seeing Shivy Rose is a bad. <laughs> well, especially when you go to Sway. Um, so that was disappointing. That is the reason you go. Yeah, yeah it was. To my Facebook feed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to Alumbra, I don't think anyone was really there. Don't remember um, that. Onto the family, we paid twenty bucks to get in. That's something that you we can never... tell me anything that I <laughs> did that night. No, no, I don't remember. Well, I think I've got to take the blame for family. I actually got kicked out, got us kicked out at about 4 a.m. Um, and that was... Yeah, why did we go, I didn't think it was Why did we go to the family? Why? It We're was 26 your idea. years old. It was your idea. We don't belong in the family anymore. You, you yeah. both need to take a good hard look at yourselves. <laughs> Seriously. If I'm Mate, that was only the beginning of our night. Then we decided to go to casino. Oh, no. Yes. Never we, went a good to, idea. we went to the CAS and... Um, Jeez, I think we got an Uber to the cast and we were trying to go in. It was like 5 a.m. We went to the ATM and we drew an undisclosed amount of money. And then they wouldn't let us in the cast because I had like a red stain on my shoulder. They said, Oh, that was I like do remember this. This blood is what on was my coming sho- back to and me. The guy was like, Oh, you've been in a fight. You've got blood on your shoulder or something. And I was like, Mate, I've got no idea what you're talking about. Like, I haven't been in a fight and stuff. Can't you just let me in? I'll wash it off and stuff. He's like, I Nah, this nah. Part. So we were like, well, well, let's go home. Like, it's 5 a.m., but it's like, absolutely not. He's just like going up to <laughs> random people. Oi, oi, can I borrow your jacket? Oi, this guy needs your jacket. Was He's I? got blood, like, on his shoulder. Was I'm I like, really? No, no, both are. We need to, like... Oh, no. We need to be, like, oh, can we borrow your jacket? We'll give you, like, some money, and then, like, once I'm in, both will run it back out to you and stuff anyway. I'm surprised um, that no one came up to you and recognised you from the show. Oh, well, actually, well, it's And funny. saw the trouble it's that you were It's funny you say that, actually. We did run into one bloke, and he was... And oh, both was like, oh, can I, can I get your cardigan? And, and this guy's like... Wait a second! I know you guys. Forget and the he card like, again. Give yep. us an autograph. Yeah. <laughs> he, pulled out, <laughs> yep. he pulled out the Facebook app and he like was holding like the logo with our faces. It's we uncanny. Were, like, we were posing. It's yeah. Uncanny. Yeah. yeah, and um, and he actually used to work at the cast. He's like, oh, I'll get you boys in and stuff. But they what? let you in the cast after they recognised well, you. We went around the other entrance. We're not stupid, but yeah. um, I think both are ended up just spitting on my shoulder and rubbing the. Whatever. So just a normal Saturday just, night out. Just rubbing one I just out. spit on it and then rub yeah. it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if we should say this guy's name, but um, he ended up giving you a hundred bucks. So 
I hope he's not listening nah, to this. Nah, nah. Well, this, I remember this. This is when it was slowly coming oh, yeah, back to me. Oh, you remember that, do you? This is when it came back to me, obviously, the alcohol had soaked through. But I remember I said, oh, I'll get, I'll get around. And the bloke's like, no, nah, no, nah, my shout, my shout. And I was like, oh, righto. I think come he won with a lot me. of best bets. And he was like, yeah, he probably won a lot of best bets. And so he handed me a hundred bucks. And he's just like, yeah, go get the round, go get the round. And I was like, oh, all right. So I went upstairs, got three beers and three rum and cokes, and then just put them on a table and stood there for a little while. And I thought I was standing pretty straight. <laughs> But obviously I was swaying. Mate, you're about as straight as Fenner's haircut. We bloody <laughs> walked over there and you were getting escorted out. And I, I actually lost it. I was like so angry that they served you six drinks. <laughs> I don't know, 40 bucks worth of drinks. And then kicked you out as soon as you got back to the table. Yep. So I was trying to argue. And our so-called mate who'd come in with us was like turning against me. He was like taking the side of the seckies. He's like, oh no, this guy's drunk. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm like, oh fucking <laughs> Craig. And he's like, my name's Zach. And I'm like, give the <laughs> and then I was like, how, how dare you serve him drinks and then kick him out? And, and they're like, oh, you know, we just thought that he wasn't safe. He wasn't, you know, cohesive and stuff. I'm like, well, the best part, best part of the night was it was a $45 round. And yeah, I woke up with an extra $55 in the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Craig. Shout out to Craig. Sucker. <laughs> well, I hope he is listening. <laughs> I'm surprised you worry about $55, though, because money must lose meaning when you're winning so much every week. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean... Did you guys have a plan if this... I mean, if you'd lost your first five best bets, what, what would have happened then? We would have shut it down. We were talking about it if and we, if we started terribly. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We would have shut down the pod, shut down the page. But you have shut done down our lives. well. Yeah, yeah, I'd like are to you think we're, we're, what we wanted. We are very surprised at how well we're not surprised necessarily. I've got high the expectations. Are up there, I've got right? high expectations. Yeah. yeah, we're cashing over sixty percent, which probably, if I'm deadly serious, isn't sustainable. That's like a pretty remarkable clip. And I've said this to other people before, but if you can cash bets at sixty percent every single weekend, you could put five bets on ten thousand dollars each. If you could consistently win three out of five, you'd make ten thousand dollars every Which is weekend. What we're talking about. If you're yeah. making ten thousand dollars a weekend, that's you know a quarter of a million dollars a year. But nobody can consistently hit sixty percent. And, and I'm, is... I'm talking about only during the twenty six rounds of the football season. Mm. And then you could have the other five months off. Um, Which is but, what I plan to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know we'll talk about you know potentially our trip to the Bahamas coming up at the yeah, end of the season. Maybe. See how we go. I haven't uh, taken any holiday days this year. So. I'd like to think that people listen to the pod not only for the best bets, but also for entertainment. But based on... We're fucking boring, um, though. We've spoken for 17 minutes and haven't given out the best bets. No, so. we haven't even talked about the NRL round. <coughs> yeah, I don't think that's true. Keep this moving. Um, and we will talk about the NRL round. <coughs> but I um, just wanted to make one more point. Yes. But I can't, because I've got something in my throat. Oh, jeez. So I'll let Have you a super beer, mate. It's empty. Oh, jeez. Can you keep talking? I'll, re- I'll get a refill. <laughs> I just said I've got something in my throat. You told me to keep talking. You, you, this is where I need you. Well, talking. I can't get a refill if you if you got Don't something you in your throat. <coughs> Pete's, dying. Going, Pete's going to get Someone's some beers. Someone's dying. All right. Sake. Let's kick off round 15. <coughs> are you li- literally, are you legitimately okay. sick? Do you need to move across? Let me see if I can get this out. We're doing something new tonight that we've never done before. Every single week. Thanks, Pete. That'll be the nectar. That'll give me something back. I was expecting one as well, but obviously this not. is a uh, terrible radio. Obviously, so I'm there's sorry. favorites. Let's let's bring obviously it back. Obviously, there's favorites among us. So something that we're doing that we've never done before is you and I are talking about the games this week for the first time. No, I'm yep. done. I'm done. All right. Yeah, are, are you You're choking it up? Are you choking it up? All right. So this this <coughs> week we're doing something. Um, Usually we'll have a bit of a chat before the pod, um, just to sort of reiterate our best bets, where, which sides we're leaning to, etc. And then we'll sort of gather our best bets together and we'll have them all, you know, have them all ready to go before the show. But this week we've done it a little bit differently. Obviously we've got our special guest Pete, we thought we could discuss it a bit, but me and Jacob haven't discussed any of the games this week. So we're just going to go through them, say our piece, and then obviously if we agree on any of them, then we'll make that a best bet. We could agree on, you know, seven, we could agree on none. So let's kick it off. Stuff's gone too long. All right. Sea Eagles hosting the Tigers. Sea Eagles laying six and a half to seven and a half points. And we have to apologise. There are no totals out yet. Um, they will be probably coming out tomorrow, I would assume. Um, you want to kick us off? Peter, your team. Yeah, put all your money on the Tigers, obviously. Don't worry about the line. Just straight on the nose. They're going to win. Right on the nose at $2.80. I, 
I'll, I'll just jump in here. I tend to agree with you here. Um, I think the Tigers have gone through a terribly rough patch. Obviously, they've come up, and we've talked about this a little um, a few weeks ago. Um, obviously, teams on long losing streaks, which the Tigers were on, um, have a big win last week. Big confidence booster for a young team. I think they're going to really show up this week. <coughs> Manly missing Jamie Lyon. Obviously, that's going to contribute a bit to their points there because uh, he's a great goal kicker. I am taking 7.5 with the West Tigers. I'm happy to make that a best bet. Tell me why not. Uh, I'm not sure why not. We'll talk about this one. Uh, obviously, we're doing it on a Tuesday night, which is different as well. And the team lists have only just come out. And like we, you, know, you and I handicap games in different ways. And I look a lot more at player personnel. And you yep. tend to look more at situational uh, spots. And the first thing that did jump out at me is this is a slightly stronger manly side than they've put on the park recently. I think... They haven't had too many games this year where Four and and, and Cherry Evans have played together. Uh, Stewart, Tom Trebojevic yeah. back in the in the back line. Stewart as well, like yep. you said. Um, they're bringing back Tom Simons into the team. I know Lyons out, but he's kind of past his best. And you always got to be wary of the team that was embarrassed on national TV, and then has now had a bye. So they've had fourteen days to stew over that game. And you know, if they've got any heart, Manly's going to turn up for a huge performance here. When I looked at this game, I thought you were going to try and talk me into the under because we've got a Manly team that, you know, uh, conceded over 40 points two weeks ago against Brisbane and we've got a West Tigers team who you've been telling me, you've been preaching... Uh, preaching the all, D. All about the Loving D. the D. Um, so I could go under with you. I don't know how you feel about that one. Um, the, the Tigers, yeah, you're probably right. They probably still are the value for the same reasons that we liked them last week, that people you probably don't appreciate how good they are. You know they haven't named Robbie Farah, yes, uh, which is a bit playing. funny. It seems to me like his shoulder obviously isn't right. Well, um, I'm a bit dirty on that as well because he didn't play a couple of weekends ago and that same weekend declared himself fit for mm. origin. And to me, that just screams of a player who's more worried about playing rep footy than he is for his club. Yeah, yeah. I think he's protecting himself so he can play some rep footy. Um, he's probably not got too many more years left in that spot. They'll find someone younger and a, you know, a permanent replacement for the next five to ten years. Mm-hmm. So I think he's really trying to elongate his, his rep career and potentially look for an Australia spot as well, maybe. But um, yeah, maybe a player who's letting the Tigers down a little bit. And hasn't yep. Gallon been classic for doing that in the last couple of years? He treats the Sharkies with disdain. He took a backdated disrespect. Um, yeah. He took a backdated suspension to just miss the end of the Shark season. They couldn't make the finals anyway. He'll yep. miss a game here and there wherever he can to freshen up for Origin. He'll come back if he feels he needs a run before Origin. He treats it like for a club captain, he really doesn't it's care. It's warm-up games. At least him, that's how, how it seems. And that's, and yeah, that's a shame. Does Terry Evans play on Friday, two days after Origin? Well, he's named. And that's the thing that if you, if you do like Manly... That's the risk. You you don't know, and I was going to say this about you know all the games. There's that. There's a you know uh, uncertainty there with any players backing up from Origin. You can guarantee there's always two or three real injuries in the game, and then there's always four or five others that just don't pull up don't well. Pull up well. And you, any time you're betting on a team this weekend that has Origin players, especially multiple Origin players, you're taking a chance. Uh, let me let me tell you this. New South Wales are going to target Cherry Evans. They're going to hit him hard. Especially after what's been going on. Cherry Evans has played, I think, five five Origins, maybe, um, coming off the bench. I think he started once, maybe. Um, but they're going to target him after all this turmoil that's been going around. Um, prepare him to get hit with some big shots, and that is a two-day turnaround. Yeah, okay, so how about this? Because we've got Origin happening tomorrow night, and there's potentially going to be players out, and also with the totals not being out, and potentially yeah, this being tough. an undergame... Maybe we don't have a best bet to agree on yet, but this could be one that we release on a Thursday. If you're right and Cherry Evans does get bashed up on Wednesday night, maybe that's where we look to play the play Wes. Yeah. If Cherry's playing and we expect to close the game, maybe we're looking under. Yeah, I could. Um, yeah, I, I could be looking under, and I, I was also going to say I'd be possibly looking at Manly under the total. Well, especially if Cherry Evans is out. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Anything to add for that one, Peter? For your no. beloved Titans, I'm with you. I'm with you on the Titans. Tigers. Just Tigers. Tigers. Tiger, Tiger, sorry. Yeah, I'm sticking by it. I'll certainly be putting some money on the Tigers this week. There we go. You heard it first from the Tigers expert um, in-house. Next up, we got the Raiders hosting the Cowboys. Um, and this is a tricky one. It's uh, a flip-flop favourite on a bunch of sites. Um, you can find Canberra plus one and a half. You can also find the Cowboys plus one and a half. No totals out yet. And it is a tricky one because the Raiders are off a bye, nicely rested, have zero origin players, uh, and offer. A really impressive performance where I think they towered up the Knights. 
Uh, and they are playing some good footy. Everyone's talking about Blake Austin. And if um, if Queensland wins tomorrow night, you know, there's going to be more chat about Blake Austin potentially mm-hmm. coming into that New South Wales side. And he's a different type of player. He, is, uh, nice. he loves taking on the line. And that does... Any player that's just, you know, willing to ask questions of the defence, I, I like and I enjoy watching. Uh, and that team has kind of taken on his personality. And it's they were just... Uh, they know they don't have the talent of their opposition every week, but they throw themselves into it 120%. And he's a player that works hard as well. He, he wasn't satisfied playing out of position at the Tigers and went to Canberra, which a lot of players don't want to go and play in Canberra. No, yeah, absolutely and, not. And he did it so he could play in his preferred position and he's proved himself. He's and, and that, that back... Uh, I've said all along that Canberra probably has the least talent of any team oh, you in the NRL. Canberra, don't you? But, but like, <laughs> look a little closer. Like Guys like Soliola, who's... I thought was washed up. He's actually been one of the form second rowers in the comp. Uh, Papali is pretty good and, you know, a little bit angry to not be in the Origin team. Guys like Fensum's a workhorse. So that Ford pack, I Isn't can get Isn't he in the Origin team? No. He is. He might be one of the, like, 18th or 19th yeah. men, but he's not, mm. he's not playing. He's on the bench, though, yeah. 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 Well, he's not one of the 17, so he's not yeah. playing. Um, and that's, and so he's got a reason to lift... North Queensland's way better than Canberra. North Queensland's won 10 straight games. The problem is we just don't know what we're getting. But I, geez, I'm just pretty close to playing North Queensland. I think you can find them anywhere between Pickham and probably minus one and a half. And, geez, I, you can I think... You find plus one and plus a half. Plus one and a half you've got. On the Cowboys. Yep. Yeah. Geez, you've got to look at that, don't you? What do yep. you reckon? It's mine. It's, it's one of the ones that I wrote down four best bets this week, and that yep. was one of them. Cowboys plus one and a half. Um, on yeah, on William Hill they're minus one and a half, but on uh, sports bet you can find them plus one and a half. Um, that's easy for me. Uh, if Thurston's playing, um, you know uh, they're gonna they're, they're just the better side. Um, and in a pick 'em sort of game, especially if you can catch one and a half points um, with North Queensland, the better side. I know it's down in Canberra, but yeah, yeah, that's that's value for me. And Thurston, <coughs> Thurston, and well, Michael Morgan and Tamo and Scott can probably just all make a trip. Straight from Melbourne to Canberra, yeah. I imagine. Uh, so well, maybe I, it's not that far to travel. And we spoke not about get that um, much time. That's true as well. And we spoke about you know inspirational captains and uh, Gallon and and Farrah treating their clubs with disdain. Thurston's the exact opposite. He, he really misses if, a game. If he can origin. play, he yeah. will. Yeah. Um, so of course you're taking the risk that he gets hurt. But even then, you've still got a chance with yeah. with Morgan and and this team is the real deal. We had Germ on the pod last week. He spoke about oh, how good, great. Yeah. yeah, and he was great. And shout out to Germ and unlucky and put your tip where your mouth is. We'll yep. speak about that a little later. But uh, yeah, Germ was great. The Cowboys are great. I was happy to play them at Pickham, where if you can pick if they win the match, you win your bet. But you telling me we found one and a half out yep. there. Plus we can one get and a half. the Cowboys plus one and a half. All right, I agree. That's, That's great. the best bet. Bam. We'll make it's it a best easy. bet. That's, That's easy. easy. There you go. <laughs> that easy. What do you think, Pete? We the best I'm bet. All, I'm all over it. I'm bored. I'm over it. All right, moving on. We've got the Titans hosting the Warriors in a Pickham game. And, yeah, total's not at you. What do you reckon, Pete? I know you hate the Titans, but I think they're a good side. <laughs> I think they could make the eight. Oh, I you heard it here first. I don't hate anyone. They're not making you, the eight. You're off your head, but... <laughs> you I, don't hate hate, I don't hate any, anybody. I like... I, I think... Their back line is scoring enough points. They just need to sharpen up a little bit in defence and they'll, they're winning enough games at the moment to make that. I think they're about 8th or 7th. When, when they play really well and everything's ticking, they are a really good side. But likewise with the Warriors. And the well, thing with this one, it's like it's a little bit tricky because they're both such hot and cold teams. It seems like, like obviously New Zealand's known as a hot and cold team and they have been this whole season. But um, the Titans as well, I mean, they'll put in... Awesome performances, um, and then just like like last week, um, and then you know they'll just go off. And in a pick 'em game like this, I think it's it's a total coin toss for me. One side could turn up, and the other couldn't. Um, not a lot of uh, Origin players out for both sides, and this is I'm staying as far away from this game as as I can. Yeah, and okay, maybe I've been a bit harsh on the Titans, but I, I wouldn't say I hate them. I understand that they're a uh, very publicly undervalued side, and I was thinking about that watching them on Sunday. And you're right, they actually are better than people think. People need to understand how good James Roberts is. He's a oh, genuine star in that back line. I've always been a fan of him. Isn't he quick? And, yeah. and when he gets the ball in any sort of space, he puts the defence under such pressure because he just, you know, can 
make 10 metres in the blink of an eye. And that's a hard to find. There's not yeah. many players in the league when they get outside their place so often. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And, you know, it's such an even competition. Every team is very good. Every team can keep themselves in games. But I really see him as a genuine match winner. Mm. Uh, you know, Aiden Caesar is also an underrated uh, half and, you know, kicks goals like crazy and, yep. and, he's, a, and he's a good leader. Uh, let's not forget that this team played on the weekend and won without Greg Bird, Nate Miles, or Dave Taylor. Who Drop are all, Dave Taylor. Yeah, and they're all yeah. uh, you know players with origin experience. He's again been named outside their 17. I know, yeah. I saw that, and I have to have to think that he'll play. And if I'm betting on the Titans, I want Dave Taylor playing. I know he can be an absolute stain, but I feel like their highest ceiling is when he's playing well, and I still don't understand he's why. He's a natural talent. I don't understand yeah. why he isn't mm. really playing origin tomorrow night. Not, not that he deserves it, because he absolutely doesn't. But with his ability, he He's should just be. So well, I actually heard, a, though. heard a, a bit of chat about this on the radio on the way here, incidentally. Mm. And uh, I think it was Gordon Tallis again mm. talking about Wayne Bennett describing Dave Taylor. He said he'll frustrate you as a coach. He could be yeah. the best forward in the world, but his attitude's all wrong. He just doesn't want to do the hard yards to be there. And that sort of shows on the pitch sometimes. Yeah. His up and down performances, like with a body like that, it's the culture. Oh, yeah. You know? And the <laughs> way he can move. And it's not often... And he can that... pass, he can... <coughs> he can chip and chase. Yeah, yeah. And it's really not often where you get a big forward that's that inconsistent. Usually it's, you know, your playmakers that are on, you know, hot yeah, and cold. Yeah, that's right. But I mean, like, all he needs to do is hold on to the ball and run hard and he just can't do it every game. But, yeah, what do you think? I mean, if you've got a well, bet here, I don't. You heard it here first. We had Pete Evans talking about... Gordon Tallis talking about... <laughs> Wayne Bennett talking about... The coal train. <laughs> so, like, yeah, it's Straight on with you mouth. there. And and last week was a perfect example of the Jekyll and Hyde team that the Warriors are. It was a game of totally two different halves, really, wasn't yep. it? Because it was a 20-6 to six lead, and I actually loved the Warriors, and I bet on the Warriors, and of course got burned by the unusual scoreline of 25-21. And they let them back in the game there. It was a ridiculous that, try just for half-time. Do you think the only reason they lost is because you bet on them? Uh, sometimes I do wonder that. I <laughs> wonder if I'm bigger than everything else and if like <laughs> my bets actually do determine the outcome of games. Um, I feel like we've been really unlucky this year, but having said that, winning at over 60%. Yeah, true. So we can't argue with that. The only side I could look in this game is New Zealand because Kane Elgie's out... We still have no Greg Burr. We don't know how Nate Miles pulls up uh, for the Titans. But I'm not going to take New Zealand here because T- Tompkins is still out. And I actually think that team is not at full tilt, and not at their best until Sam Tompkins is in that back line. So I'm happy to leave it alone. I see exactly what you're saying. It's a coin toss and the odds reflect that. Let's leave it alone. All right. Um, next up, we got the Bulldogs hosting the Panthers. Bulldogs laying anywhere from six and a half to seven and a half points, um, and that's it. Why don't you tell us what you reckon about this game first? Well, all right. Listen, I, I like I like the Panthers in this game. Um, soured back and really strange. Desi Hassel hasn't named a single Origin player um, in the Canterbury lineup now. Ah, uh, who knows what's going to happen? I feel as though there's no way he can sit all of his Origin players. There's five of them. Um, and they're obviously an integral part of the team. And look, that's that line's not right if five Origin players are sitting. But he hasn't named five. He hasn't named any Origin player in the in the lineup. Um, so I think you know if obviously if that if he goes ahead with that, which we're not going to really know until kickoff, um, then you're obviously taking the Panthers at seven and a half. But I feel as though with five Origin players backing up, even if all of them play, Soward back in the lineup, I'm taking plus seven and a half with Penrith. And as you often say in the pod, I tend to agree. That's true. Um, that is absolutely right. <laughs> that line is wrong. I mean, so the way I see it, even if Canterbury plays their full strength side, and that's a hell of a side when they are full strength, and potentially they will win the comp, but Penrith is also full strength other than Moylan. And I know that that's some asterisk because yeah. Moylan is one absolute superstar. But I tell you what, with Tenny Zalesniak into fullback, he is also a hell of a young player. Really big, strong, fast, um, you know, mobile Kiwi that can play fullback. They've got enough guys that can cover the back line. They really haven't had many games this year with Soward and Wallace, both in the halves. The forwards are fully healthy again with guys like Peachy and uh, I- I- uh, Taylor. Yeah. Um, back Elijah Taylor back in the team, back in the mix. They're forwards with uh, Plum and uh, and Docker. We do love we Plums love and we also love Docking. <laughs> 
it's a, it's a really solid side that you can't give over a try to. So I feel like, and I've seen this line as high as eight. I think it's yeah, ranging right. anywhere from six and a half to eight. So I feel like if you take plus eight, you've got a decent chance with Penrith against a full strength Canterbury. But Canterbury haven't named any of their origin players, like yeah. you said. Now I don't know. Yeah, like is he fo- is has the foxing? Like we we're well, not going to know. And but the thing is, they won a game two or three weeks ago <laughs> with not one origin player playing against the Raiders. Yeah, we'll be at the Raiders, but the Raiders aren't bad this yeah. year. But but I wonder if he's showing some faith and just saying, I'm going to roll with the 17 guys that I've got in camp this week because I know it's a long season, it's a marathon, not a sprint, and I don't necessarily have to win this game anyway. He's more worried about the fact that his team has five origin players and he doesn't want you know the wear and tear and he'd prefer to get Maybe. rest. And Don't I, they want this win though? They're not I'm even in the eight. I disagree with you. I think this is a must win. I agree. I tend to agree you with you. You look at the table and Penrith and Bulldogs are the big two emissions from that top eight. They're not there at the moment. They both are teams that are good enough to be there and expected to be there. Now, if one of them wins over the other here, that's a four point game for them. Yeah. And I think they're probably their biggest competition to knock each other out of the eight at the moment. One of them's getting in, I'd say. They're both two good asides to both miss out. And this Bulldog side's a side that I think will be really dangerous late in the season yep, because of the depth. You look at that side that they put out without five origin players and whether yep. Desi Hasler's having a go at the NRL after last week's yeah. argument, I don't know. But that side, even without their five origin players, is a good side. And yeah, Tony Williams could could into last week too. Yeah, yeah. So. And could potentially beat a lot of sides in, in the league. But oh, yeah. Penrith, again, are a good side on the other side of that. And... I see them winning this game. Yeah, I, th- I think the line's well out of whack, particularly with those few players missing. So I agree. Yeah, yeah. This is I one of the craziest right. lines of the season. Look, I, I'll totally give you that. I think you've made a really good point. I think in my mind, I just automatically assume that the dogs are going to be there in the finals. Yeah. I just can't believe a side that good won't be. They're so on I don't. Back foot at the moment. And that's why yeah. I don't see a round fifteen game as a must win for them. But but you're right. Like they don't. They have to see it that way because yeah, they've got a leapfrog some sides and especially Penrith I think there's no way they miss the eight either but I, I looked at the odds disruptive and I think Hasler's made a mistake I think he's making excuses so his job's maybe not put up for question yeah because they're they're heavily underperforming they were tipped for top four by most pundits yeah and yep. it is so every, every year distracting here. every year you have a team that made the grand final that massively underperforms and mm-hmm. there's a lot of reasons for that and one is that um Everybody else lifts when they play against you, and that could be true for the dogs. Uh, they've lost a couple of games that they really shouldn't have lost as well, and they've had quite a few injury suspensions and rep football disruptions. So I'm not taking too much away from the dogs. It this has been a disruptive for me, start of the season with their suspensions, particularly. I understand, yeah. and and this isn't a bet against the dogs so much as it is a bet on Penrith that I've been saying all mm-hmm. season you're going to find value on. And the way I see it, it's a total lottery. Does he play all five Origin players? Do all five get through the game unscathed? Does he just drop Hodgkinson? Yeah, does, yeah. yeah. Does, exactly. There's you know there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on there. Does he sit them all to make a point? Does he sit them all because he he honestly thinks they're gonna it's gonna do them the good in the backgrounds of the se- yeah. season? We don't know, but worst case you're getting a a decent line, and best case you're getting the line of the season. So yeah, I'm taking Penrith. Plus eight. Sounds like you yep. agree with me. Definitely and we agree. should definitely play Canterbury under the total. Especially especially if there's guys like the Morris Twins and Hodgkinson, who's the goal it's kicker, aren't playing. Yeah, yeah, that's points definitely off the board. And Penrith, you know, is definitely a, one of the best defensive teams in the league. So I presume, I'm looking at that game, the total's probably going to be somewhere around the number of 40. The line at, at, um, at eight means that Canterbury's total could be around the 24 mark, and I'd be very confident playing under that. It's, we'll release that when that Yeah, when, when once that the comes total out. comes out. But, yeah, I, I think, worst case scenario, I think this line this line reflects every single starter playing. Yeah. Um, now, I think you bet this before Origin. I I've think already that bet it. The I've only thing it. that can happen is this line goes down after yeah. Origin. Um, so, yeah, it's the best bet from us. Not one, degrees, not plus one eight. Origin player for Penrith. So that's a massive plus as well. They've got a full, un, um, fresh, undisturbed full fresh team. They're fresh. Yeah. Take Easy. it. Easy. Plus yeah. eight Panthers, and we will uh, we'll probably re- release a possibly another best bet after we see what happens uh, with Origin. But yeah, we'll stop after those uh, those four, and we will um, yeah preview the next three three games of the round um, yeah in a few minutes. But first, a word from our very loyal sponsors. 
NRL Betting Podcast is proudly brought to you by F-Sanity, the Performance Athletic Association. Check out our new sporting apparel on Instagram today. Where are you going, Pete? I will come back half hour. Yeah, I'll, I wouldn't go to the toilet if I were you. Alex is here alone and I don't know if he owns a toilet brush. Nah, nah. Nah. Um, so we should. I was just going to ask we, actually before you move on, Alex. Where yes. Do you get all the tissues in this place because there's a lot of empty boxes. There are around. no <laughs> tissues in this house. We've had pizza. We um actually, how was your pulled pork? It was. It was good. How was your pizza? It looked pretty red. And not as raw, good. If I'm <laughs> there is not one tissue in this you house. You have to really grab it with both That's hands. That's a problem. Pete's here trying to open a bottle of beer with another bottle of beer because he, he he refuses to touch my penis wood. Bottle opener from Bali. You're going to have to touch it, aren't you? Uh, oh, yeah. Man. He came in before and I said, oh, you're going to have to use the penis opener from Bali. And he said, oh, shoot, you really have to really have to grasp it with both hands there. He seemed like he, he knew his way around. Uh, I'll leave it there. Anyway, moving on. Um, so enough about your penis wood? Yeah, enough, enough about my penis wood. Put your tip where your mouth is. It has been a raging success. This week we have two more new challenges for our first overseas winner. Gordon, uh, hide now, find later. Of course, not our first overseas winner. That's our oh, second. Yeah, second. Oh, second. Back to goodness. back. Kiwis are taking over this God. competition. And look, I've got to say to like our Australian contestants, shame on you. How can we let this happen? This, you know, this competition means a lot to people out there. Oh, well, don't and look at me. We expect better. <laughs> well, you're English, Pete. I'm well, Australian bit, born, but um, bitterly disappointed. English too. raised. And how how was your experience in put your tip where your mouth is? I thought you really. Uh, didn't disgrace yourself. You you won some money. I oh, yeah. well, I ended up down at what twenty cents. Yeah, and that's that's not terrible in the scheme of things. And <laughs> I look at a lot of others' results. It wasn't too bad, was no. it? But uh, no, I I was quite happy with my picks before the round, and um, I thought I still had the right side. So they just didn't quite pay off for me. Yeah, you. I lost you played, by, like, um, thirty cents, forty cents. Yeah, and yeah, I think you uh, put up enough points to. Not sure if people can hear a racehorse in the background, but um, you put up you put up enough enough points or enough dollars to win in some weeks. Um, so yeah. that's a bit unlucky, it's but a, it's a fickle game. It's it is, but that's that's life. A bit and of that's luck betting. involved, as betting always has. But and no, I, it was good. Really I always it. say um, you can only beat what's in front of you, and <laughs> you, unfortunately, you couldn't that week. Uh, but we've got some exciting news for you, and something that you know other people who are fans of the game, and we've had some great contestants. Over the weeks, I can't Fan name them all, but Pete, you were definitely one of them. People loved Germ, uh, Tommy Ilassie, uh really captured the imagination of, a, of the AFL Michael market. He's been winning won. a lot of bets and mixed picks. Didn't, he has been, that yeah. Week. Yeah, yeah, and um, so what we've what we're looking at doing, and it'll be in two or three weeks' time, is having a, a repercharge or a redemption round where we're going to bring back some of the past favourites. Oh, um, I- Love and give them, eight for yeah, that. and it's yeah. going to be. I don't know. I reckon we'll have like eight or ten people going head to head, and just the top two for a chance to get back in the mix. And yeah, um, the biggest loser, effectively. Basically, well, yes. yeah, but the, really, people that deserve a second shot. Uh, <laughs> and we know that, like, yeah, anything can happen in one week. But a lot of people deserve a second shot. And and how we'll be choosing that will really be, I think. Um, not necessarily the people that had the best results or anything like that, but just the people that contributed the most to yep. the competition. Got involved and, you know, the most. In the banter and um, and spread the joy of the competition. So for any future contestants, if you like, you know, you don't know if you're going to win or not, but to give yourself the best chance of, you know, a, a second shot, yep. just, just that's what I say every week, get the banter going. Win yep. the banter, you win the round. Yeah, and um, that has usually been the case. Yeah, and Jimmy came out like, he pretty he much he stormed into, into Brando's house, slapped his wife around, ate yep. food from his fridge. I felt sorry for him. Yeah, he yeah. just soaked him degradingly and, oh, and he yeah. won. And then I think you could almost sense he was a little bit scared of Germ yep. the next week round. Um, he, he called him, you know, called him a peasant. because he was black. Yeah, exactly. Scared. He just wasn't sure what to make of Germ. And, and although Germ didn't win, Germ did beat Jimbo this week. So, you know, it's all about being able to back, yep. back your talk up. Yeah. Um, so we're look, really looking forward to that one this week. Uh, I feel good about our challenger this week. We're picking, of course, none other than the owner of uh, Big Wheels Truck Alignment, Dylan Dobson. Uh, right, last. Yeah. And he's a, finally, a finally true gets friend. his chance. And I mean, we would have picked him earlier, but he's been overseas and he's been. 
kind of locked down, just chilling out, just studying his bets. Uh, and he yep. told me he can't wait to compete this week. He's going to bring it home for us. Man, I've got a lot of faith here. He's got fight. a wedding to plan, but he's put the pot above all else. And... Yeah, he's got a business to run, but he like it's not his concern right now. His concern is bringing it home. Yeah. Um, and Gordo, uh, Gordo yep. hide now, find later. He's yep. <laughs> he's uh, nominated Ash, Ash Granger, Gra- Ash Hermione Granger. Yep. So you know, will she bring magic to the? <laughs> we all like Hermione the comp- Granger. Yeah, we'll see, and we'll release those playing cards uh, hopefully tomorrow night, or tomorrow. definitely in the next kind of forty eight hours. So you can have a look at who these guys are picking, uh, and like I said, get involved. Get on board. You know, get involved. You got a better chance of of us picking you to to play next week. And you know, Pete, you can attest to the fact that it's enjoyable, good fun. Would you Stressful. say it was fun? No, it was a lot of fun. I really did enjoy it. <laughs> Would you say it was one of the highlights of your career, or uh, probably top three? Yeah. <laughs> three, yeah. Top three, yeah. That's all you can hope for, really. That is. And Pete's done some wonderful things in his life. Oh, where it's do right we begin on that? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Should we get on with the round? Probably, probably since we've been going for 50 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> we've got the Knights hosting the Sharks. Uh, the Knights slight favourites, minus one and a half. Um, yeah, Pete, do you have a strong feeling about this one at all? Uh, not too much, to be honest. I don't like the Knights as much as you do. I don't think anyone likes the Knights as much as you two do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the Knights like the Knights as much as you two do, but I can't pick this one. If I was going to go one way to be the Sharks, they've got a slight head start, and that would be my only, my only inkling. Yep. I like your honesty, Pete, because you're kind of calling us out that you feel that we, you know, are leaning a certain way. And you have to be honest with yourself. And I'm kind of, yeah, if you have an opinion on a team, and I've definitely had a high one of the Knights for a few weeks, and I felt like a legend when they were 3-0. and Oh, you look uh, like a legend too. <laughs> Haven't you come crashing down? Yeah, yeah and, and I have to, I have, you have to let it go, and you have to be fluid. And, and Are you ready yet? And understand. Are you ready and, to let them go? And I <laughs> am because they don't have Jared Mullen back. And I, you know, I want my... Opinion. Did they let Le Lua go? Yeah, he's yes. gone. He's gone They've to the just Super League. Him cold. Yeah, yeah. see and you later. That team yep. has a lot of backline depth. That team still has a really sweet backline. He's not back going line. to Canberra. Uh, I've heard Le Lua's off to the Super League, and, okay. and it's, cra- it's a bit strange to lose a guy mid-season. But look, they can cover him. Uh, Gidley, Gagai, uh, the Metalia brothers. Um, they've got, of course, uh, Tyrone Roberts, and even Tuma Barbe is not a bad player from from the Warriors. But, look, I'll probably stay away from them until Mullen gets back because he, he is that important to that side. And this, this game's the classic uh, great backline against a great forward pack, I think. And that's what the Sharkies have, obviously. You don't know who's... Or you don't know how Gallon pulls up after Origin. He'll probably just have a rest because yep. he doesn't really care about club football. Does he play for the Sharks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a question. It's hard to remember that. But, but they still do have guys like Fafita who was really... Unlucky to get dropped from New South Wales. You've got Luke Lewis, who is probably also a little smiling about that. Uh, Wade Graham. Even their bench has guys like Hyington, who's played Test football for England. Bukoya. Uh, so, and and the Sharkies backline isn't too bad these days. Obviously, we've spoken in past pods about Jack Bird and and Val and Tyne Holmes. Yeah. So, I, I was leaning towards the Knights. I probably see it as a fifty-fifty game. I know you can catch a point and a half with Cronulla, but it's probably not enough for me to like a side. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, these have both been bet on teams for us this season, um, and I think the line's yeah, right about where it should be. Uh, it's a pass from me. Um, next up, Storm hosting the Broncos in a pick'em game. Um, I'll let you know straight off the bat, I'm staying away from this. Obviously, a few Origin players uh, well, may or may not be backing up for this one, so it's, it's really up in the air, especially to pick it on a Tuesday when uh, we're not going to know who's playing you know, um, uh, until Wednesday night, basically, um, when when Origin's all done and dusted. But, yeah, look, without Cooper Cronk, I can't back the Storm. And There's a lot of Origin players involved, isn't there? It's, there is, it's yeah. It's too many unknowns for me. I agree, yeah, especially on a Tuesday like we're picking these. And, yeah, that's what we sort of have to reiterate. We pick this, you know, usually we do the pot on a Wednesday and we pick, the, we pick it on a Wednesday, but there's, you know, players that that are out or announced out and players that are announced in, you know, before the game and we can't really change our picks before then. So we're doing this really early. Too many unknowns. I agree with you, Pete, for this one. Uh, for me, I think the Bronx have, what, five, six Origin players yeah, out? Yeah, most um, of the team. Yeah, yeah, and the Storm, obviously. Um, well, Cooper Cronk's definitely out, but obviously, yeah, Slater's back into Origin. Um, Cam Smith. And um, Chambers, who's yeah, been a superstar this year. Hasn't even been good, yeah. This is a stay away from me, I'll say it. The only side I can look to is Brisbane because I know for a fact Cooper Cronk's out and I 
definitely. Uh, it's taken me a while to come around, but I do respect what Brisbane's been able to do this year. And we did say from the start that they're a team that's going to improve. And look how well they already started this year. I'm so, jumping on the Broncos yeah. bandwagon. Now, right now yeah. this, looking at this game, like Brisbane's off the bye. So I know we've got five guys playing Origin, but the others are kind of rested, whereas Melbourne aren't off the bye. Melbourne are off a Monday night, tough Monday night game. Uh, it does depend who gets through this. And the problem is you can watch Origin, you can see who gets injured and who doesn't. But after Origin 1, uh, Bennett just chose to rest... Friday and Hodges anyway, so you're really not going to know till kickoff who's going to get a game, so that's a problem. Uh, if I was to find out that the Brisbane players pulled up well and you know were able to play, and I've definitely got my doubts that Slater will back up. I've heard he could have uh, season-ending in, uh, he might surgery not play again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so then I definitely would look at playing Brisbane, and we've said that we may still give you out a couple of extra bets uh, at the end or yep. after Origin two. Yeah, uh, yep. we'll post that on our Facebook page. But for now, yeah, I'm happy to not commit to a best bet at all. Just too much uncertainty, as I've said. Yeah, I agree. Happy with that, Peter? Oh, absolutely. Last game of the round, I'll let you kick this one off. We've got the Dragons hosting the Roosters. Uh, I've seen this line sort of hovering around four and a half, five and a half, with the Roosters being favoured. Um, what do you think of this one, Peter? It's at four and a half, five and a half points. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot of points for a team who are right up there to, I agree. to get. I agree. Um, St. George have been solid all year. They've been in every game they've played, I think. Um, the Roosters, you look at their squad, it's fantastic. You, and so many good players. I don't know how mm-hmm. they fit them all in. But um, it's a lot of points for me. I'd be leaning towards St. George with that line. Yeah, and I, I tend to agree with you here. I, I see a low scoring I see a low scoring affair here. Um, obviously, it's well known that the Dragons uh, have well conceded the, the least amount of points in the comp. Um, very, very good defence. Um they're, this is going to be a big game for, for both teams. I think they're both going to get up for this one. Um, the Roosters, obviously, they, they'll get up for this one as well. I, I think, you know, they're, they're not sitting where they, they would want on the ladder at the moment. Uh, they're sort of hovering hovering mid-table there. Um, and St. George, obviously, right at the top there. But, I look, I, I wish the total was out here. Uh, I, I think this is going to be a real grind fest. Um, and, and any time I see a low-scoring game and I've got a home dog catching five and a half points, I really like St. George in this spot. This um, one was very low scoring last time, I think, as well. It was a pretty close yep. game. It was about 14 12, I think. Yeah, and that's that's the kind of game that I expect. Um, you know, the Roosters, they really haven't been themselves all season. I uh, know they, they pulled off a, a miracle last, last week, um, but, you know, obviously they've got a few Origin players out as well, going to be backing up. And I know it's five days rest, but still, that, that kind of stuff takes its toll. It's like a Monday, Friday turnaround. Um, that, that does affect the players, and I think. Yeah, five and a half is too much for me. I, I like St. George here. And what you said about the Roosters, Pete, people used to say about the 2002 Doggies, just so many good players, you don't know how you can fit them all in. Mm-hmm. But um, it's a good point. This Roosters team is stacked, and that's why they are the favourites here. And I looked at their team list, and that's the strongest lineup that they've been able to put on the park all season because they didn't have Jake Friend at the start of the year when Blake Ferguson was killing it, but now everyone's back. Having said that, we've got to see five players, oh, pardon me, four players get through an Origin game. But this is a Monday night game. So as much as I really like the Dragons and I think that they're a legit top eight side and a side that can beat other big teams on their day, I can understand why the, the Roosters are laying the points here. I think it's such a quality Roosters side that, um, as you said, is a little lower on the table and needs to kind of climb up and wants to get a top four spot. And we spoke about how they played each other early in the season and, and the Dragons won that one. So I feel like there's a bit of revenge factor here. I think even more reason for the Roosters to not let them beat them. Now, the Dragons have just the one Origin player, I think, just obviously Dugan, mm-hmm. who does take a beating, uh, you know, runs the ball back so hard, you know, but he is a superb athlete, so you've got to expect he's most likely playing. I'm kind of with you guys could be looking to the under, but then again, there's so many attacking weapons on both these sides, mm. and a uh, couple of goal kickers in Maloney and Widdop that barely miss. So if you're playing under the total, you're not going to get too many missed goals. So, and of course, it's going to be a pretty low total anyway because mm. it was fourteen twelve. So I don't really see a best bet myself in this game, but it's another one that could be affected by Origin because if we see a couple of the Roosters players pick up an injury, then we definitely could look to take the points. Yeah, with the Dragons. So yeah, we're happy to, I'm happy to leave that one for now, and we'll we'll see how the Roosters pull up from Origin, and obviously Dugan as well, because that guy is 
Very injury prone. But he a monster, though. He a monster. All right, that'll That's wrap up the round. Is it? Yeah. Parramatta fans get a week off from oh, pulling thank their God. hair out. <laughs> they deserve it. They Are there any Parramatta fans left? Oh. They've all had heart attacks <laughs> in the last two weeks. <laughs> oh, it's just every... Yeah, and Pete was saying this today. It must just be horrible being a Parra fan. Well, you understand why... Peter Stanley's got no hair now. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled it out. It's just so much stress. I, I was listening to Triple M last night when Stella commentates, and he was physically ill. I actually listened to it on, on Triple. I think they dropped the ball twice in the last. Yeah, what they yeah. did. Seconds. Like they, they were saying, "Oh, Parramatta's got the win," and Sterlo's like, "This isn't over yet." They actually <laughs> dropped it two tackles later. Yeah, Formally. it's like you Whoa. have a full set of six with forty-five seconds left. Yeah, the game and there was a try up. that was. Not given that was a yeah, try, well, potentially. That's a that, point. Yeah. And it probably wouldn't have cost the pot, although it still could have, because if he scored that 26 all, if they don't kick the conversion, it, I wouldn't have been surprised if the Storm if scored an extra time. Yeah. Uh, and we could have lost that bet. But in fact, we, we were on the right side. And I think we did have the right side last night with the Eels because uh, Reese Robinson broke his cheekbone and Nathan Peets did his ACL. That's pretty unlucky to have two of his starters injured in the first half. And those two last storm tries, the one off the intercept and the one off the bad uh, pass, the, and the one off the bad pass, and yep. the one off the uh, ricocheted kick where there was an accident offside missed by the yeah, video hit, ref. Hit, I think the eels guy and we're, we're deserved winners, uh, but be careful playing them in the future. Just Pete's means a lot to that side. Uh, I've kind of written down our best bets. They're a little discombobulated this week. Yeah. Um, well, but do you want to run through them? Yeah, I'll give a summary of what we've kind of established. Uh, in the West Tigers Manly game, we're potentially leaning West and leaning uh, under on the total, but we're going to wait and see uh, what comes out of that game, particular uh, the health of Cherry Evans. Obviously still got a bad shoulder as well, let's not forget that, and we said he could take a beating. Uh, we love Cowboys plus one and a half, get on that now, I don't think that can hang around too long. I think it's worth the risk, play it before Origin, and if their guys get through that, they should definitely start favourites. We love Panthers plus eight, definitely yep. get on that right now. Yeah, uh, that's not going to be eight by kickoff. Worst case scenario, it's going to be a good game, yep. and in You've another scenario, line. Panthers could win this game by twenty. Honestly, uh, and I really think we should play dogs under the total if it's anything over twenty, and I think it could be around twenty four. So that could be yep. a really good best bet. I'm saying wait and see with Brisbane. It could be some value there, but a lot of uncertainty. And yeah, we probably aren't going to find a side in the St George Sydney team, but Sydney game. But we'll just see. Yeah, uh, what what comes out of the game tomorrow? So, Sounds yeah, good. can't wait for Origin. That wraps it up. Hope Queensland. Uh, yeah, you know, hopefully they do win. Can bring it home after we lost last year. We'll Although, how there. good would it be to have a live third game in in Brisbane? Well, yeah, and I've got tickets to the decider, so that'd be kind of oh, cool. You want it to be live? You know, I bleed my own, so happy to see uh, the Queenslanders get up tomorrow night and and wrap up the series. Yep. I'm sure the Bearback like Bandit wouldn't be happy with that because he's a New South Wales fan and he never wraps up. No, he's never wraps That's another up. story. <laughs> um, put your tip where your mouth is. Our challenges cards will be out. Our player cards will be out tomorrow. tomorrow. Look out for mixed picks. That should be... Uh, Delivering well, another winner. Yeah, and I think he'll get that out in the next 24 hours as well. Uh, we've got NBA Finals. Could be finishing up tomorrow. Game 6. We played Golden State minus one. They're currently up 3-2. Looking yep. for a 4-2 lead and their favourites tomorrow. Favorites, yeah, so, so that's... Looks good like bet. being a really good best bet as well. We hope you got on that. Uh, we've gone at a pretty good clip on our, on our best bets yeah, on the sports. And like I said, picked it up last week in the NRL as well. So we're on a bit of a winning streak. Certainly are. Hope you guys can jump on board. Uh, until next week, as always, please, please gamble responsibly.